With a full moon shining brightly overhead, you're looking live at Launchpad 0A at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport on Wallops Island, Virginia, where Northrop Grumman's Antares rocket stands fully fueled, 133 feet tall, ready to launch 31 minutes from now to send the unpiloted Cygnus cargo craft into orbit on a three-day journey to deliver some four tons of supplies and scientific experiments to the International Space Station. Following a last-minute scrub of last night's initial launch attempt, tonight's liftoff is set for 8.16 and 14 seconds p.m. Central Time, 9.16 and 14 seconds p.m. Eastern Time at the start of a five-minute launch window. The weather for tonight's launch just couldn't be better. It is absolutely pristine at Wallops Island, just a few clouds at 4,500 feet, winds out of the northwest at four knots, temperature of about 58 degrees Fahrenheit. Everything is green across the board. And there is the target for the Artemis program coming up for NASA, the moon. With sights set on that destination to land the first woman and the next man on the surface of the moon in 2024. Good evening from Mission Control in Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center. Flight controllers here are watching over the station as they do 24-7, 365, tending to its systems and the three crew members comprising the Expedition 63 crew. We'll talk more about them in a moment. Back at the Wallops Flight Facility, Northrop Grumman engineers are monitoring the countdown at this hour from the Range Control Center. They will be in control of the nine-minute climb to orbit for the two-stage Antares rocket from liftoff to the point when the Cygnus resupply craft separates from the vehicle's second stage. They just completed a poll of all of the engineering positions just a moment or two ago. Everyone is go for launch. In Dulles, Virginia, another team of Northrop Grumman engineers are on duty as well, ready to take over the flight of Cygnus after spacecraft separation under the direction of Mission Director Zach Dwyer. They'll be following all of Cygnus's maneuvers during its three-day trek to the International Space Station. Back here in Mission Control in Houston, the Orbit 3 team of flight controllers is on duty with the station crew members well into their sleep period for the night. As was the case last night, Flight Director T.J. Creamer is back in charge, presiding over the Orbit 3 team this evening. Cygnus's launch was originally scheduled for this past Tuesday night, but a forecast of inclement weather at Wallops for both Tuesday and Wednesday night pushed the initial launch attempt to last night. And with the weather finally cooperating last night, the countdown reached the 2 minute 40 second mark before the launch was scrubbed. We'll talk more about that in a moment. At the, the present time, we're sitting at T minus 28 minutes and counting. There are no issues being worked by the launch control team at Wallops. As we mentioned last night, each launch of a Cygnus cargo craft carries with it a tradition for Northrop Grumman, the naming of the spacecraft after a noted space explorer who contributed to human space exploration. The Cygnus being launched tonight is named for NASA astronaut Kult Nechavla, who twice flew into space, first on the STS-87 mission aboard the space shuttle Columbia in 1997, and then on the ill-fated STS-107 mission aboard Columbia in 2003 in which she and her six crewmates lost their lives during entry. Kalpna Chavla, the first NASA astronaut of Indian and South Asian descent, being honored on this mission of Cygnus to the International Space Station. The Antares rocket being launched tonight is a two-stage rocket that will propel the Cygnus cargo craft to its preliminary orbit to begin the chase to reach the International Space Station in the wee hours Monday morning. But before we look ahead, let's look back 24 hours to last night's postponement. And with us this evening by phone to discuss all of these developments, returning tonight with us is Christina Halona, the Northrop Grumman Antares System Engineering Program Manager. Christina, thanks for joining us once again this evening. Thank you, Rob. I'm excited to be back with you and our NASA TV viewers to see a successful and Terry's launch and Cygnus mission to the National Space Station. Everything's looking great tonight, but uh, before we get into all of that, uh, walk us through last night's scrub. What was the cause? How did Northrop Grumman remedy the issue that brought us to this evening's launch attempt? No problem, Rob. So. 
Last night during the countdown, the computer auto aborted at approximately T minus two minutes and 49 seconds when it received an off nominal reading from the ground support equipment. Uh, the team tracked the automated abort to a software issue and it was, res and it was resolved. Um, nonetheless, launch scrubs for ground systems issues do uh, sometimes occur as we place mission success and the safety of our team and a public goal above all other considerations. Um, as you as can be seen from the numerous scrubs this launch we've had this past week, uh, including uh, Delta IV and Falcon 9 due to weather and ground system faults, each and every countdown will not always result in a launch attempt, which is just simply part of the launch, uh, launch business. Um, our Northrop Grumman team is, uh, is trained to respond professionally to scrub launch attempts in order to maintain Antares and Cygnus in a safe condition. Uh, we always quickly investigate the root cause if there's any issues and maintain readiness to launch as early as the next day. I just want to say what a great work, a great teamwork it was by the launch team last night and this morning to quickly respond to the scrub launch attempts and put us back in position to launch again less than 24 hours later. We are a go for tonight, so we're excited. Christina, this Antares rocket has become a workhorse for Northrop Grumman in contributing to that supply chain for the International Space Station. How robust is this vehicle? How important is tonight's launch as we head into a busy period aboard the International Outpost? So, Rob, NG-14 was uh, designated as a mission essential uh, mission by NASA during the COVID-19 pandemic, and our team has been focused on being ready on time despite the additional restrictions and mitigations put in place to keep our workforce safe. Uh, the Ontario's launch system and the Virginia Space Launch Pad, we, are, we both use our designated to be very robust, which has allowed us to achieve seven consecutive successful Antares 230 and 230 plus flights that enabled successful Cygnus missions to the ISS. Antares is our 230 plus workforce and we are carrying Cygnus loaded with nearly 8,000 pounds of cargo tonight. Northrop Grumman is very proud of our contributions in supplying critical research and cargo to the crew on the space station. And for me personally, as a Native American from the Navajo Nation, I am truly honored to be part of our human exploration program, and I hope to inspire others to reach for the stars when getting their, when setting their goals. Thank you very much, Christina. Christina Halona of Northrop Grumman with us this evening by phone. The countdown for Cygnus' launch now stands at T minus 23 minutes, 14 seconds, and counting. At the time of launch at 8.16 and 14 seconds p.m. Central Time, 9.16, 14 p.m. Eastern, the International Space Station and its three residents will be flying 258 statute miles over the southern Indian Ocean. Antares and Cygnus will arc out uh, to the southeast from Wallops to start the rendezvous and a series of pre-programmed uh, engine firings that will lead to its arrival at the International Space Station and its robotic capture Monday morning Station Commander Chris Cassidy of NASA, backed up by Russian cosmonaut uh, Ivan Wagner from Roscosmos, will be in the cupola at the robotic workstation monitoring uh, Cygnus' systems uh, during its final approach, with Cassidy uh, using the Canadarm2 robotic arm to reach out and grapple the uh, Northrop Grumman resupply f uh, vehicle. At that point, he will turn uh, the robotic chores over to a team of ground controllers here in Houston who will maneuver Cygnus into an installation position to uh, be installed and bolted into place on the Earth-facing side of the Unity module of the International Space Station for a stay of about uh, two months. Uh, the uh, Cygnus is scheduled to depart the station in mid-December for a two-week free flight in which additional scientific experiments will be conducted. Copy not required. On board the, the International Space Station, Cassidy Wagner and Russian cosmonaut Anatoly Ivanishin are asleep at this hour, less than three weeks away from the end of their six-and-a-half-month mission on the orbital outpost. They are scheduled to return to Earth on the evening of October 21st, U.S. time, which will be the morning of October 22nd on the steppe of Kazakhstan 
for a parachute-assisted landing in their Soyuz MS-16 spacecraft. That will come eight days after the arrival of the next trio of residents to the International Space Station, NASA astronaut Kate Rubens, Sergei Ryzhikov, and Sergei Kud Sverchkov of Roscosmos, who are in final training right now at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan for their launch on October 14th in the Soyuz MS-17 spacecraft. Inside 21 minutes until launch, everything continues to proceed on track and on time for a liftoff at 8.16 and 14 seconds p.m. Eastern Time. We'll check 379. The uh, ascent profile for uh, Antares and Cygnus uh, following liftoff calls for main engine cutoff on the first stage of the Antares rocket about three minutes and 18 seconds after launch, followed six seconds later by the separation of the first stage. Some 30 seconds later, the fairing, uh, which uh, encapsulates uh, the Cygnus uh, resupply vehicle, will also separate, exposing Cygnus uh, during the uphill ride uh, to its preliminary orbit. Stage two ignition on uh, the Antares rocket is scheduled at about the four minutes, seven second mark into the flight. It will uh, burn for two minutes and 44 seconds until uh, stage two burnout occurs, putting uh, Cygnus into its initial orbit with uh, the Cygnus vehicle itself separating from the second stage of Antares at about the nine minute, nine second mark into the flight. The uh, Ultraflex solar arrays on Cygnus are scheduled uh, to be deployed about two hours and eight minutes into the mission. Uh, we will not be on the air live during that activity. It's about a 30-minute procedure. We will, however, provide updates on uh, the web on nasa.gov and the station blog site uh, when solar array deploy is completed later this evening. If everything goes as planned, Cygnus uh, again will arrive in the wee hours Monday morning at the International Space Station, arriving along uh, the uh, intersection called the R-bar, the radial vector, which is an imaginary line drawn between uh, the International Space Station and the Earth. At the uh, Cygnus uh, will arrive about 400 feet directly below the station and inchworm its way uh, up to the point where Cassidy will use the robotic arm to reach out and grapple the resupply craft. The capture of Cygnus is scheduled uh, right now at 4.20 a.m. Central Time, 5.20 a.m. Eastern Time on Monday morning. And off to LC, countdown. Go ahead, LC. Yeah, just be advised, step 386 will be required for today's op. Copy that. And LC, this is prop lead. Actual F1N level is 10 of 10. Copy 10 of 10, 381, core one. Provide status on F1N level. LC core one, countdown on standby. As we approach uh, the 17 minute mark into the countdown, uh, propellant loading is complete. You see the venting uh, at the interstage area of the uh, two stage Antares rocket. Everything continues to be green across the board at Wallops. The weather is perfect. Everything all set for Antares to begin its flight uh, to deliver the Cygnus resupply vehicle to its preliminary orbit. CMDLC countdown one. LC core one countdown one. Go ahead, core one. Uh, fuel level adjustment is not required. Copy, not required. We'll go ahead and check 382. And prop two, step 383, configure OCCS for no adjustment to fuel level.
CMDLC, countdown one. I'll see the CMD. And yeah, you go for step 385. You can transfer signals to launch mode. LC, LC, CMD, in work. Two. LC, this is Prop 2 on countdown one. OCCS configured for no adjustment to fuel level. At T-minus 16 minutes and counting, those calls uh, from the range control center engineers uh, for Northrop Grumman indicate uh, that uh, the fuel loading uh, for the Antares rocket is at the proper level uh, into stable replenish now. No adjustment for fuel uh, required this evening and Cygnus is about to go on internal power. Tonight's launch kicks off a very busy uh, period of activity at the International Space Station. Again, uh, a launch tonight uh, results in Cygnus arriving at the station in the wee hours Monday morning. That will be followed uh, in a couple of weeks uh, by a Soyuz crew rotation, as we mentioned, uh, with Kate Rubens of NASA and her two Russian crewmates scheduled to launch October 14th from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan for a two-orbit rendezvous, a three-hour fast-track uh, journey to the International Space Station that will uh, kick off an eight-day handover with Chris Cassidy and uh, his two Russian crewmates, Anatoly Ivanishin and Ivan Wagner, who we said a moment ago are in the home stretch of their six and a half month mission on the station. They'll be returning to Earth on the night of October 21st, U.S. time. And right on the heels of that, on October 31st, on the 20th. Just passed through T minus uh, 15 minutes. We'll be coming up on our polling for our final count, uh, proceeding with our final countdown in just about uh, two minutes. On the uh, 20th anniversary of uh, the launch of Expedition 1, Bill Shepard, Yuri Gudzenko, and Sergei Krikalov. On October 31st, uh, the Crew-1 mission is scheduled to launch aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. The uh, Resilience uh, Crew Dragon spacecraft with Mike Hopkins, Victor Glover, Shannon Walker, and Soichi Noguchi uh, on board, scheduled to arrive at the International Space Station on November 1st. T minus 14 minutes and counting. And CMD, I'll wait for your call on 387. I'll see this is CMD. Say this is in launch mode and nominal. Copy that. CMD, we'll check step 387 complete. Here in the uh, International Space Station Flight Control Room, a final go has been passed on uh, to Flight Director T.J. Creamer by uh, the Cygnus Mission Director in Dulles. Both Antares and Cygnus are go for launch. At this hour, the International Space Station flying uh, 258 miles over the South Atlantic, about to swing uh, just to the south of uh, the continent of Africa. Again, at the time of launch, at 8.16 and 14 seconds p.m. Central Time, the station and its three residents who are asleep at this hour will be flying over the southern Indian Ocean. Countdown one, step 388. At this time, I want to pull to proceed with final countdown. GSO? GSO, go. RSO? RSOs go. TD? TD is go. Prop lead? Prop lead is go. Stage one? Stage one is go. MES one? MES one is go. GCE? GCE is go. ACE? ACE is go. Mars? Mars is go. CMD? CMD is go. LD? LD is go. NG? In honor of Kalpana Chabla, whose research on astronaut health and safety during space flight helped pave the way for humans to live and work in space, Northrop Grumman is go. Copy that, Northrop Grumman. We are go to proceed with final countdown. Check step 388. Ops 2, LC, be advised, step 389 is not required for today's operation. Step 390 will not be required for today's operation. And Ops 2 copies. 
Coming up on the T-minus 11-minute mark, that final poll for launch conducted at the Range Control Center at uh, the Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia as Antares is uh, set uh, to begin its journey of about nine minutes in duration to deliver the Cygnus resupply craft to its preliminary orbit. And passing T-minus 11 minutes. Coming up on the T-minus 10-minute mark, fuel loading complete. The weather is perfect. Everything is all set to begin the journey of uh, Cygnus to the International Space Station. And T-minus 10 minutes. No issues being worked uh, in the range control center at uh, Wallops Island, Virginia, or uh, at Dulles, Virginia, where the uh, Cygnus uh, spacecraft team for Northrop Grumman monitoring uh, Cygnus' systems ready to take over at the time of uh, spacecraft separation just over nine minutes after launch. Ops one step 391, enable ACS VDMs. LC Ops one, ACS VDMs internal power on. ACS VDMs enabled, voltage nominal, and commands cleared. Copy that, elect one, check 391, check 392. And launch team be advised, step 393 will not be required for today's operation. Once uh, Cygnus arrives at the International Space Station in the wee hours Monday morning and uh, is uh, grappled and then installed and bolted into place, a series of leak checks uh, at the uh, berthing interface uh, between Cygnus and the Unity module will be conducted by uh, NASA astronaut and station commander Chris Cassidy, uh, making sure that uh, we have a, a tight seal uh, between the Cygnus and the station before he begins the process of opening the hatch to Cygnus and the start of the unloading of uh, the most uh, time critical experiments and supplies that are being brought up uh, on the Cygnus resupply vehicle. Coming up on the seven and a half minute mark until launch. Passing uh, through seven minutes until launch. T minus seven minutes. You go to initialize ground ordinance power supply. LCF2, ground ordinance power supply, initialize. Okay. Okay. Ground ordinance power supply, 
Terminal. LC prop lead, ECSO activation verified. Copy all there, prop lead, ops 2, elect 1, check 395, 396, and 397. T-minus six minutes and counting, Northrop Grumman preparing to provide uh, Friday night lights down the eastern seaboard. Everything is go for launch. LC site control, half day ECS transfer to GN2 confirmed. Roger that site control, check step 398. And launch can be advised step 399, not required for today's operation. Coming up on the T-minus five-minute mark. T-minus five minutes, OPS-1, transfer avionics to internal power. LC OPS-1, avionics internal power on, stand by for command completion. LC Ops 1, external power off. Internal power is nominal. Roger that, Elect 1, Ops 1, open FTS Umbi Loop. LC Ops 1, FTS Umbi Loop open and green. LC Elect 2, FTLU and FTS receiver indications are nominal. Copy Elect 2. Ops 1, you go to send, all arm command. LC Ops 1, all arm command sent. SNAs, ODMs, all arm. NASA TD, TD report range status. LC TD, range is green. T minus four minutes and counting, everything in order. No issues being worked at the range control center at Wallops. And launch team be advised, phase three dynamic limits will uh, be active at T minus three minutes. FC command into flight mode. T minus three minutes and counting. Auto sequence start. RDM bus voltages and current nominal. Copy all like one. GNC one, verify ready for nav mode. LC, GNC one, orbit nav ready for nav mode. Roger that. Ops two, step 414, switch to nav. LC, Ops two, orbit nav, switch to nav. Copy that, Ops two, check 414. LC, GNC one, orbit nav, telemetry verified. Roger that, GNC one. Coming up on the T-minus two-minute mark, and Terry's systems in excellent shape, no issues. T-minus two minutes on my mark. Mark. Ninety seconds until launch. T minus one minute, thirty seconds.
T-minus one minute. Well into the terminal count, T-minus 50 seconds and counting. T-minus 30 seconds. Mark. T-minus 15 seconds. T-minus 10. Five, four, three, two, one. Engine start and liftoff. The SS Kulp Nachavla takes flight, sight set on the International Space Station. Pitch and roll programmer in. One minute into the flight, everything looking good on Antares. Passing through Max Q, attitude nominal. Engines at 100. Antares passing through the area of maximum dynamic pressure. Attitude nominal. All vehicle subsystems are nominal. Coming up on the two minute mark into the flight, everything looking good. Just passing 100,000 feet. Attitude nominal. Vehicle subsystems nominal. Engines remain at 100%, attitude nominal, vehicle subsystems nominal. Good reports from the range control center at Wallops. 30 seconds to throttle down. Throttle down is the precursor to main engine cutoff of the first stage. Coming up on the three minute mark into the flight. Engines at 55% thrust. Standing by for main engine cutoff on the first stage. Main engine cutoff. Stage one separation, attitude nominal. Stage one separation confirmed from the range control center. And Terry's flying straight and true. And Terry's in coast phase until proper conditions for fairing separation and stage to ignition are achieved. Fairing separation confirmed. 
Cygnus now exposed uh, to the atmosphere as it uh, continues its trek uphill to its preliminary orbit. Stage two ignition. This will be about a two minute 44 second burn of the second stage engine. Attitude nominal. Attitude nominal, vehicle subsystems nominal, 140 kilometers. Coming up on the five minute mark into the flight. All systems continue, continue nominal, altitude 150 kilometers. All systems nominal. The uh, second stage burnout uh, scheduled at about the six minute 51 second mark into the flight. Altitude 170 kilometers, roughly one minute to stage two burnout. Altitude, 184 kilometers, all systems nominal, roughly 30 seconds to stage two burnout. Six minutes, 40 seconds into the flight, standing by for stage two burnout. Stage two tail off. Stage two burnout. And Cygnus has reached uh, the preliminary orbital insertion. And Terry's will coast for roughly 100 seconds prior to payload separation. And as you heard, uh, the next uh, major event will be uh, Cygnus's separation from the second stage. Attitude nominal. Cygnus uh, has begun its journey to reach the International Space Station early Monday morning. All vehicle subsystems nominal. Altitude 191 kilometers. Roughly one minute to payload separation. Liftoff occurred uh, right on the dime at uh, 8.16 and 14 seconds p.m. Central Time, 9.16, 14 p.m. Eastern Time. The International Space Station uh, and its three uh, crew members who are asleep at this hour approaching the southwest coast of Australia. Altitude remains uh, 192 kilometers, roughly 30 seconds to payload separation. All systems nominal. At the time of uh, Cygnus's separation from the second stage, the operations will uh, move to Dulles, Virginia, and the Cygnus uh, flight control room under the direction of Mission Director Zach Dwyer.
Cygnus separation. Spacecraft separation confirmed. The SS Kulpnachavla well on its way to the International Space Station. Seacam initiated. Attitude nominal. LC, ace out. All right, Ace, uh, great job calling it out, and uh, great job to the Northrop Grumman and uh, NASA Wallops and uh, uh, everybody else, uh, Mars, uh, on uh, getting this uh, mission off in uh, difficult times. Okay, uh, launch team, uh, we're going to go ahead and proceed now with our post-launch uh, checklist. And uh, Prop 1, uh, excuse me, Prop Lead, I assume 425 is already uh, started. And prop lead LC countdown one. Yeah, we've already began our warm helium and cold helium purging. Okay, copy that. We'll check 425 complete. GNC one LC step 426. Uh, uh, let me know when you've uh, uh, provided the uh, Antares state fact uh, state vector to Cygnus. LC GNC one uh, state vector submission and work. Okay, copy and work. LC, go ahead, uh, LD. LC, this is LD. I'd just like to thank the launch team for an outstanding effort. Way to go, team. Thank you, Mars, NASA, and the Antares launch team. Oh, and Cygnus, too. So thanks, everybody. Great job. Carry on, LC. Thank you, LD. This is Mission Control Houston, Cygnus now safely in orbit en route to the International Space Station, a perfect launch from the Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia. On the line with us right now is the International Space Station's Deputy Program Manager, Kenny Todd. Kenny, uh, good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. Hey, Rob. It's great to be with you. Thanks. Well, Cygnus now safely en route uh, to uh, the International Space Station after that launch scrub last night. Uh, carrying some four tons of supplies and experiments, including a couple of nitrogen tanks. Give us uh, sort of the big picture on uh, what's on board Cygnus, why these nitrogen tanks are important, and some of the other highlights for what uh, this supply run will mean for the uh, international complex. Uh, you bet, uh, Rob. Uh, first of all, uh, let me let me offer my congratulations to the entire Northrop Grumman team. It was a spectacular launch. I don't think you can ever get uh, tired of watching these night launches and, uh, as you said yesterday, you know, creating a, the artificial dawn for a few minutes there. It's just gorgeous, just gorgeous. And uh, the entire launch team there at the Waltz Flight Facility, again, they just do a great job at launching these vehicles. But, uh, yeah, we're very excited about having uh, Cygnus uh, off the pad on the way coming to the International Space Station uh, with about, uh, about 8,000 pounds of cargo of which uh, uh, over a third of it is really, really committed to uh, the, the science and utilization of, of the space station and, and really taking advantage of this, of this, uh, this low Earth orbit asset uh, where we can uh, do some things in microgravity that, that, quite frankly, we can't do anywhere else on the planet. So it's, uh, it's, we're always excited to, to have new, uh, new, new people uh, come into station and, and really uh, trying to Trying to see what uh, what kind of things that they can they can learn in, the, in this environment. So, uh, you mentioned earlier um, about the nitrogen tanks. Uh, uh, we are we were a little anxious to get this uh, this flight off the ground because uh, of the fact that it it had some additional nitrogen on board. As most uh, people who follow station on a regular basis might have heard, we've been dealing uh, with a, a pesky little atmosphere leak on board the station for the. Uh, for the better part of a, a three or four months now. Um, uh, station in general always leaks a little bit, uh, but uh, over the last several months we've seen an increase in that, which uh, anytime you're you're dealing with a leak on a, on a pressurized spacecraft, um, uh, you certainly want to know where it is, and you certainly want to make sure that you have enough consumables on board to, to, uh, to feed that leak until you find it, and that's uh, kind of where we find ourselves right now as we're working through um, uh, several different troubleshooting efforts to, to try to locate this leak, but getting these uh, getting these tanks on board certainly um, again helps us up our consumables uh, uh, in the nitrogen area and, and uh, gives us a little more runway as we uh, we try to sort through this this issue. Kenny, uh, the uh, Cygnus vehicle arrives at the station uh, pre-dawn on Monday. This kicks off uh, a very busy period 
for the station and its crew. Uh, if you would, uh, give us a little snapshot of the air traffic control pattern over the next few weeks with crews and vehicles coming and going. You bet, Rob. Um, you know, last year we were uh, around this same time frame. I remember uh, doing a press conference and, and calling uh, last year around this same time frame the season of, of EVAs because we were getting ready to swap out batteries and and that was coming with a huge series of EVAs along with fixing the alpha magnetic spectrometer and, and uh, again, another large number of EVAs. This year we find ourselves really with just a, a, se a season of, of visiting vehicles, and uh, it starts tonight with the launch of this Cygnus spacecraft. Uh, we'll get it on board here Monday morning, um, and then uh, and on, the, uh, on the 14th of October, uh, we'll see our next uh, Soyuz spacecraft with our, our next crew coming to the space station. That particular spacecraft will actually perform a two-orbit uh, rendezvous on its way to the space station, which uh, uh, hasn't been done for before with a with a crewed spacecraft. So we're we're pretty excited to uh, to uh, see how all that works. And again, it'll be uh, pretty amazing when you think about a crew launching from the ground here and, and roughly three hours later being being on the International Space Station. So we're excited. That's coming on October the 14th. And then uh, about a week later, on the 21st, uh, Chris Cassidy and his two Russian crewmates will will return to Earth um, after their six month, approximately six month stay on board on board the station. And uh, uh, Kate Rubens, who will uh, who will uh, then uh, succeed uh, Chris uh, as being the, the handler of the USOS segment, will have about uh, uh, a little over a week before uh, we uh, we see the launch of of the next uh, commercial crew vehicle, um, which would be, would be termed uh, Crew-1, uh, coming to the International Space Station with, with an additional four UO, USOS crew members. And so uh, Kate will be by herself for a short period of time. Uh, she's been there before. She understands Space Station very well and was an excellent crew member when she was, was on board several years ago. And so we're looking forward to getting her back on. But the crew size will We'll jump uh, on board from from three to to seven uh, about a week after after she uh, after she gets to orbit. So once we get the crew back up to seven, uh, we'll have about a three week uh, hiatus where we won't be dealing with arriving vehicles. But but shortly after that, probably somewhere around November the 22nd, we'll see the launch of of SpaceX 21, which is a cargo vehicle, and again bringing another several thousand pounds of of uh, mostly science and utilization to the space station. So uh, this crew is going to be really busy uh, throughout this full season uh, leading up to basically the uh, the end of the year. And Kenny, uh, finally, uh, before that happens, we're just weeks away from a coveted anniversary on November 2nd, that being the 20th anniversary of a permanent human presence on the station. Uh, in the course of history, in your mind, how significant is that milestone in human exploration? What has it meant? for the station and the international partnership? You know, Rob, um, it, it, you know, we, uh, for those of us that go around and, and talk around and, to, uh, you know, to people outside our business, uh, you know, uh, sometimes it, it comes as a shock when we tell them, uh, you know, especially the younger generation that, that uh, you know, for your entire life, um, you know, you, you haven't known a time when there hasn't been somebody living off, off the planet. and. And uh, in some ways, they know that, and they, they don't see a world that's any different. But for those of us that, that have been around a number of years, you know, um, going, going to orbit uh, was such an amazing feat uh, years ago. And to think we've been living there uh, for the last 20 years is, uh, you know, almost incomprehensible. But, you know, the thing that really uh, strikes me, Rob, um, about the fact that we, we've had international crews living living in orbit for the last 20 years is looking down at the earth and seeing what all has transpired on the earth in that time frame, uh, you know, with disasters and conflicts, uh, successes and failures and, and things that have gone on around, around our planet. And in the midst of all of that, as an international partnership, uh, we, we know no boundaries. Um, and every crew member that, that launches, uh, almost will come back and tell you when somebody asks what you see when you look down, and it's you, you don't see boundaries, and uh, and and that is something that over the last 20 years I think uh, really hits home for me is uh, is the fact that uh, even even with everything that goes on here as we uh, as we circle <laughs> circle around the sun every year we we continue as a partnership to to work together and and do amazing things and and pro it's probably one of the most harshest environments known known to humans. 
Kenny, engineers such as yourself always say that space is hard, which it is, uh, but tonight Northrop Grumman made it look easy, and uh, Cygnus is well on its way to uh, the International Space Station. Kenny Todd, uh, the Deputy ISS Program Manager, joining us tonight. Uh, thanks very much, Kenny. Appreciate it. Hey, happy to be with you. Take care, Rob. Thank you. Back here in Mission Control, uh, the uh, flight control team will be working uh, throughout the course of the weekend in concert with Northrop Grumman's Cygnus engineers at uh, the Cygnus Law uh, Control Center in Dulles, Virginia, monitoring uh, all of the uh, maneuvers that lie ahead uh, for the SS Kolpnachavla on its approach to the International Space Station for its capture, scheduled at 4.20 a.m. Central Time, 5.20 a.m. Eastern Time on Monday morning. The first major uh, engine burns are scheduled uh, early Saturday morning to uh, increase uh, Cygnus's altitude to match that of the International Space Station and the correct phasing to bring it uh, into the neighborhood of the International Space Station on Monday morning pre-dawn. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, to recap, uh, the Northrop Grumman Antares rocket lifted off on time from the Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia. Launch pad 0A at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport at 8.16 and 14 seconds p.m. Central Time, 9.16 and 14 seconds p.m. Eastern Time this evening. It was a perfect ride to orbit, uh, sending uh, the Cygnus resupply vehicle to its preliminary orbit en route uh, to a three-day rendezvous that will result in Cygnus arriving at the International Space Station early Monday morning. Our programming on Monday, October 5th, looks like this. We'll start our rendezvous and capture coverage for Cygnus at 2.45 a.m. Central Time, 3.45 a.m. Eastern Time on NASA television. Chris Cassidy, uh, the station commander, NASA astronaut, will uh, use the Canadarm2 robotic arm to reach out and capture Cygnus at 4.20 a.m. Central Time, 5.20 a.m. Eastern Time. We then will take a pause and come back a couple of hours later for installation coverage where uh, Cygnus uh, will be turned over to the robotic uh, ground controllers here in Houston uh, to uh, install and bolt uh, Cygnus into place on the Earth-facing port of the Unity module of the International Space Station with our installation coverage beginning at 6.30 a.m. Central Time, 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time on Monday morning. 
So with that, we'll wrap up our coverage. Coming up uh, just a moment or two from now will be launch replays of tonight's liftoff uh, of the Antares rocket from Wallops to send Cygnus into its preliminary orbit. For uh, all of us uh, here in Mission Control in Houston, have a safe weekend, and we'll see you once again on Monday morning. This is Mission Control Houston.